Hey y'all, I wanted to do a quick video on solving equations review. This was for 829 for both Algebra 2K and Algebra 2L. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about solving equations as well as how we can use this to rearrange equations, particularly from standard form to slope intercept form. Now to start, the four basic equations, or four basic functions or operations that we already use are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And these are things that we apply to almost all equations. There are more things that we apply, but these are going to be kind of our standard. This is what we're going to be using for the most part. So, let's start talking with addition and subtraction. Now, what we have here is we have two apples and two oranges, adding two more apples and one more orange. Obviously, that gives us four apples and three oranges. Now, the point here is not that you need to learn how to count. The point here is that we're trying to say you can only combine like terms with like terms. We can't add apples to oranges and suddenly end up with seven apples. That's not really how that works. So let's say that this was x's, 2x, and this was y's. So we had 2x, 2y. We have 2x, 1y. And they're all adding up, and that would give us 4x's and 3y's. Or let's say that this wasn't y, it was just a number. So 2x plus 2, 2x plus 1 would give us 4x plus 3. It wouldn't give us 7 or 7x, because we can't combine these things together. You can only combine like terms. Something that occasionally helps me is to color code stuff. Say, hey, this is purple, purple, and purple, so purple plus purple has to stay purple. And yellow plus yellow has to stay yellow. So sometimes a highlighter helps with this. Now, what about multiplication and division? For that, if we multiply an equation, we have to multiply the entire equation. We can't just multiply part of it. So if we have two apples and two oranges, and it's being multiplied, then our result's going to be twice the number that we started with for each of those things. Okay. Let's go on from here. Now, a variable is just a placeholder for a number. It's basically something we don't know. So if we write x, that doesn't mean that x equals 1. In fact, that's completely wrong. In fact, if we write x, what it means is that x could be 1, or it could be 10,000, or 20 billion, or negative 3. We don't know what it is, but it is some number. And so we normally represent this with a letter or a symbol um, just because it's a lot simpler than writing, you know, unknown. I can spell unknown every single time. It's a lot easier to just write X or Y or Q. Maybe not Q. Okay. So to solve for a variable, we have to get a loan. What this means is if we have an equal sign, we want it where it's by itself. There's not a number in front. We don't want that. There's not something else adding to it. We want it to just have a single number by itself. We're looking for what an apple costs. Not what three apples cost or what a negative apple costs. We're looking for what an apple costs. And so we'll use addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. So, that's kind of our basics. Let's get into it. So let's try to solve this thing. Now to do that, I'm going to write it on a blank sheet of paper, so I have plenty of room to write. So we have 2x plus 12 equals 20. Now how can we solve this? Well, there's a couple of ways. Most people start by subtracting 12. And then you would end up with 2x equals 8. And then to get rid of the 2, if we divide by 2 on both sides, well, 2 divided by 2, that's just 1. So we end up with 1x. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. And 1x, well, that's the same thing as just x. So we got x equals 4. That's pretty good. But there's another way we could do this. So let me write that over here. On our first way, we subtracted, then we divided. What if we do it the other way around? What if we divide first? So let's divide everything by two. 
So 2x divided by 2 is 1x, or just x. 12 becomes 6, and 20 becomes 10. Okay, so now we can subtract 6 to get rid of the plus 6. We also get x equals 4. So of these two options, they both work, but the left side's a little bit easier. Because look at it this way. When we divide, we're only dividing twice. On the right side, we had to divide three different things. So the left side, what's well, the better, excuse me, it's the better way to do this. But why? Well, if you talk about order of operations, a lot of people uh, say grouping or parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction. And we're all taught, go this way. Start with grouping and parentheses, end with addition and subtraction. But for solving, we're trying to undo stuff. So we want to go this way. So we want to deal with the easy stuff, the addition and subtraction first, and then come back to the multiplication and all that. So that's kind of where we're standing on this. Now, let's go and find another problem. Let's take this one. If we're trying to solve this, what we should do first, because what we're looking for, is we're looking to get this x by itself. So what we should do first is we should subtract 1. Because that's the addition and subtraction part. That would give us negative 16 equals negative 4x. Then let's do multiplication or division. We can divide by negative 4. And this would cancel out. And we'll end up with x equals 4. All right, so that's really it for this video. Video. Recording. Yeah. All right, so um, now let's talk about literal equations and slope intercept form. So everything that we've done so far has had just one variable with it. Um, now, if we have something that has more than one variable, like y equals mx plus b, that is y and x, we're going to call that a literal equation. So, again, probably the one that you've heard of the most is slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So, what we're going to be doing is we want to be able to rearrange. So, let me go ahead and write some stuff down. We're saying slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. It's called slope intercept form because the slope is y and the intercept is b. But there's other ways to write linear equations. One of the ways is standard form. This is ax plus by equals c. The main thing is that the x and the y, well, they're both on the same side of the equal sign. And standard form doesn't really tell you a lot. It's not that A, B, and C represent something. They kind of do, but they kind of don't. The main thing is it's a good kind of middle step of some word problems. So what we want to do is we want to go from this standard form into slope intercept form. And slope intercept form, the Y is by itself. So we can take a standard form solve it for y, we're good. Let's try that. Let's try this problem. So we want to solve this equation for y. So what can we do? Well, we can subtract 4x from both sides. Now, if we do that, we'd have no more x's on this side. We'd still have the 2y, though. And on the right side, we'd have 12 and negative, excuse me, negative 4x. We can't combine those. So let's just write them together. 12 minus 4x. All right. And then from here, we can solve for y. We can divide by 2, divide by 2. We now have 1y equals 6 minus 2x. And that's basically slope up for. It's just that it's written a little bit backwards. Instead of y equals mx plus b, this is more like b plus mx, where the negative 2 is our slope, and the 6 is our y-intercept. 
but that works. So we're essentially just moving the x over by subtracting or adding it and dividing by anything in front of the y. Let's try this again. Something like this. Okay? So from here, subtract 9x, subtract 9x. We now have negative 3y equals negative 27 minus 9x. And then we can just divide by negative 3. And we get 1y equals 9 plus 3x. Again, we know our slope. We know our y-intercept. Because the slope is always going to be multiplying the x. Assuming we've solved for y. All right. That's really it. Um, again, slope intercept form tells us more than standard form. That's why we want to do this. Also, if we have it in y equals form, uh, we can plug it into our calculator. Now, I want to do one example off this practice sheet, just because it's a little bit more complicated. It's not much more complicated, but a little bit more. So if we have this first problem here, we're going to start with the same method. Subtract 10x, subtract 10x. We would be left with negative 7y equals negative 8 minus 10x. Then we would divide by negative 7. Now, the y would stay that way. Negative 8 divided by negative 7 doesn't come out cleanly. So let's just put it as a fraction, 8 over 7. Same thing with 10 and 7. So that would be 10 over 7x. And that would be our answer up here. So that's really all that we're doing. Keep it in fraction form. It's a little bit more precise. In some ways, it's easier. Um, if you end up with a fraction that you can reduce, it'd be best to reduce it. But even if you don't, you still have a technically right answer. Okay? That should be it. Hope that helps. Have a good one, y'all.